DD2 time then everybody, it's race three of the day and we're on to our final second chance heat. Once again, an 11 lap race, once again the top six make it through. Your odds are a bit better in this one though, because there are only eight drivers, so six of the eight will go through. And this is how the grid shapes up, you can see it on screen on RGMMC TV. Tom Pitlick for THP Racing, the British driver on pole. Bradley Liebenberg has been very, very quick this weekend, one of the quickest in qualifying and was quick enough to finish sixth in his final heat. The problem was the first two heats were disastrous. But Bradley Liebenberg, the South African, has been impressive this weekend. And the Birrell Arts KMS driver, I fully expect to see coming through here. Then we've got third and fourth on the grid, Fred Woodley and Samuel Horuska. Geza Fodor, one of two Masters drivers that needs to get through this to make sure he scores some points for the championship. Uh, in terms of the Masters division for the Ricardo KMS team, he is going to line up with Joey Vonk for the Slangen Karting team on the third row of the grid. And then the fourth row of the grid, Sanad al Rahawi from Oman, the Birol Art KMS driver. And alongside him from Japan is Kawazi Tomokazu, the other Masters driver that needs to get through this to try and pick up some championship points. And he drives for the unique racing team. So that is how they shape up. As I said earlier on, Tom Pitlick actually scored the same points as Enrique Baptista and Marius Rao, who did make it through onto the back of the automatic qualification positions, but because he wasn't quite as quick in qualifying, he uh, just missed out and will start on pole for this one instead. And likewise, Bradley Liebenberg and Fred Woodley just missing out by a single point in their case. Fred Woodley lining up third on the grid from Toronto in Canada. Drives for the Marinello North America team, sponsored by... Uh, Molcal Motorsports, OMP, Woodley, Greenhouses and Marinello North America themselves. He's 19 years old, been racing for seven years now since he was 12. And last year was the top 10 runner in the Grand Finals in Spain, so ninth overall in the Grand Finals for Fred Woodley. The 15-year-old Samuel Horeska is next to him, comes from Slovakia, has been karting for 11 years now, started at a very, very young age and has contested races in the Grand Final and been a front runner in that. Uh, when it was run in Portugal. We'd like to thank everybody, mom, dad, grandma, everybody that supported his racing. So let's see how he gets on. As the lights go out, the race gets underway. It's a little bit spread out, but I think it's going to be let go here. And Tom Pitlick, with a magic start, is going to lead them through turns two into turn three. They all make it through that uh, hairpin at turn three, which is always a bit of a worry. It's side by side at the back of the field for seventh and eighth positions here, but it's our pole sitter uh, that leads the way. Bradley Liebenberg is tucked in behind him, so he's managed to hold second place. The two front row men already beginning to pull away here as they come into the chicane for the first time at turn eight, right then left, and it swaps around as well with Liebenberg getting his nose in front now ahead of Tom Pitlick. So Liebenberg from second place into the lead of the race. They work their way through the S section now and closing up in third place. That was Fred Woodley, who was very good on the brakes into turn nine. But I think has scrubbed a bit too much speed off coming out of the corner and then comes under danger himself going down towards turn number 12. So through they come at the end of lap number one. It's been a great lap for Bradley Liebenberg. Not only has he got the lead, he's got the lead by six tenths of a second. Tom Pitlick next through in second. Fred Woodley and then Geza Fodor third and fourth. A little bit of weaving around just behind, but Sanad al Rahawi can't find a way through. Samuel Horeska is sixth. Tomokazo has gained a place ahead of Joey Vonk for seventh. But that's the only change on the first lap of the race. So seventh and eighth switch around, but the top six all stay in position. Well, other than Bradley Liebenberg, obviously has that lead and he's jumped himself nice and cleanly away. And I did predict, oh, we got a challenge for the second position and he's done it in that uh, very common overtaking manoeuvre, uh, position, sorry, down in turn number nine. And up into that second position now goes Fred Woodley, another one that we were probably mildly surprised that he's had to uh, take part in this second chance heat. But he's got himself up into second. Is he going to have an answer for Bradley Liebenberg that just down to misfortune put him in this one and he's got himself out front. He's stretching his legs. He was the fastest in his group within the qualifying session, just to give you an idea of how frustrating a day he had yesterday. He's up there. He's oh, nearly 1.2 seconds in the lead already. But now that we see Fred Woodley has got himself up into that second position, is he going to have an answer? Is he able to break the toe away from Tom Pitlick and start closing in on Bradley Liebenberg? At the moment, it's uh, probably managed to get at about three cart lengths, so he's able to focus on his own race rather than being defensive. But we'll have to see. Go on, Chris. Change for seventh. Good move that from uh, the Japanese driver, Tomokazu, to gain a position. That was on the run to turn nine. So he passes Sanand al Rahawi and goes, importantly, up into the top six. So that's both the Masters in the top six at the moment. Leader's a long way clear. 
second is on his own, but third, fourth and fifth, they're all tied together. Tom Pitlick, Gator Fodor, Sanad Al-Wahawi, uh, actually he's gone through as well. Tom Bacazzo, uh gained a place, as I said, but it might be mistake, it was on Samuel Haruska, in fact. So Al-Wahawi and Tom Bacazzo both getting up into the qualification positions. Well, Samuel Haruska lost out massively there, didn't he? Because he was running in fourth position, I think it was, and he's now out of the top six at the moment. He's not going through to the pre-final. Here is the lead driver going through then we have the next five largely stuck together but there we have six seven two joey vonk just desperately trying to get on the back of that train to see if he's able to get in a mix to try and take one of the six places we got a challenge for third position and throwing it nice and cleanly up the inside that must have been gazar fodor i presume yeah on tom pitlick so the pole sitter down to fourth place now we saw in the seniors that the pole sitter slipped back to seventh and had a very frustrating time of it so tom Got to keep this going now and uh, try and stay out of trouble. So it's Liebenberg in the lead, Woodley in second, third, just looking up a bit there, was Sanad al Wahawi. He's come through well in this race. Pitlick down to fourth. Uh, Gaze of Fodor, actually, down to fifth place. So it was al Wahawi making the move. Fodor's fifth. Tomokazo in the last qualification position at the moment, sixth. Samuel Haruska just behind him. But Joey Vonk just a little bit away from them now, falling away uh, from the pack. So Tomokazo. He's trying to line up a move here on his master's rival, Geza Fodor, who's there in the white suit, the all-white suit. There are the two of them. And the Japanese driver lunges up the inside. It's a tidy move. He keeps it on the way out of the corner, and he gains the play. So Tomokazu has got himself out of the danger zone, if you like. He's gone from sixth to fifth. So Fodor is now the last man through, and therefore he is the sole target of, Geza, of uh, Samuel Haruska, who's there in seventh place. So Haruska not far behind either, is he? There they go. And a little look at the inside. Seventh place. He's not the place to finish. He'll do anything to be sixth. So you better watch out if you're in that final qualification position. And change for second position, continuing his uh, move up through, is Sanad al yeah. And uh, he actually started in seventh position, so on the back row of this, and he's got himself up into that second position already. Now, time-wise, what is he doing? He's doing a 50.2, which is actually two-tenths quicker than Bradley Liebenberg out front. But in fairness, Bradley is driving within himself because we saw him doing... 49s on Friday, and he sat there doing 50.4 is his, fa his fastest lap so far. But Samit is on the case, isn't he? Samuel Horeska has, uh, the Slovakian has uh, a couple of times finished in the top three in the Central Eastern European Karting Championship, which is a competitive series of Rotax Max racing. Uh, sending countries like Hungary and Austria, but he is struggling a bit here and not really closing the gap to Gezo Fodor. The 699 cart in sixth, the 663 cart in seventh place. They're coming back up towards the chicane. And leader's long since gone, isn't he? Bradley Liebenberg, well, well clear. And Fodor with a mistake there coming out of turn seven and he gives the position to Samuel Oruska. So they switch around. Fodor's now going to try and get this back on the way into the left under at turn nine. He does so with immediate effect, but he runs deep into the corner. Just about going to cling on to it, though. And uh, that has all changed around. So Oruska trying to get in the mix there, but falling back, unfortunately. Uh, and still in seventh place, and it has brought Joey Vonk a bit closer to them. Yeah, that was Kawazi Tamakazo that was having the moment there in cart 627. As he came through turn number seven, he got pushed wide, and uh, through went Gezo Fodor, and uh, they're still fighting hard to try and keep himself up within those positions. He is still running in sixth position, so he hasn't been able to be passed by Samuel Kruska yet. But uh, you can see the three of them absolutely joined together. That's your worst nightmare, isn't it, Chris? If you're in sixth, you want to have a gap. But they do not have any gap. It's sixth, seventh, eighth, running close together. And you can see that Samuel Krusko is all over the back of Tomokazu. Yeah, you're right. Fodor had uh, uh, got past him and I was expected to see Fodor come through first. That run through turn six and seven. But Tomokazu losing two places, then gaining one back on that lap. So Ruska very briefly up into the top six. Three laps to go. Now, as our leader crosses the start-finish line, but it's this battle a bit further back that we're going to keep our eye on here. Tomokazu goes through with his best lap of the race, 50.577. He was caught ever so slightly by Hareska, who's good on the brakes onto turn three as well and gets right onto the tail of the Japanese driver. Left through turn four. Could there be a chance of a pass into turn five? No, it's a bit tight and tricky there. Turn six and seven coming up, probably follow your leader. Same with the chicane. Joey Vonk is in the mix as well. He's there, ready to pick up the pieces, isn't he, Joey Vonk, the Dutch driver? Should either of these two get into strife 
on this run down to turn nine. Harasco goes for the inside line as late as he can on the brakes. He's got through into sixth place. Again, he's deep into the corner, but he covers off the line. Tabacazo's coming back, though. Slices up the inside into turn 11. Then he runs deep. He runs wide. It's three abreast now oh, as they go down the back straight. Harasco's going to miss that. Tabacazo's going to get back to the front of that group. And into seventh place will go Joey Vaughan. But then Joey runs wide, coming out at 12. Out of the start, finish straight. He just about covers off the line. But Harasco has been 6th, 7th, and now 8th. So it hasn't quite worked out for him, but it is not for the want of trying. Two laps to go. They're still tied together. So there are three of them going for that final qualification place. <laughs> A bit do -si do your partner, that one, wasn't it? But it's interesting that I feel that uh, Tomokazu saw that move coming from uh, Samuel Kruska when they went down to that turn number nine he let him take the inside line he got himself the, the m full momentum down through the S's so that turn 11 he could make a dive up the inside himself the problem was is it compromised his exit speed we were talking about that on the track guide that it can very much do that as you wash out to the outside and you've got to go up that incline over the little bump but then, as you had called it just previously, Joey Vonk was indeed there, ready to collect the pieces, wasn't he? Last lap, Joey Vonk is about to come under serious pressure, I think, from Samuel Oruska. But Samuel's got to gain two places on this final lap, hasn't he? And he's gone through into turn two. Look, so Oruska in the orange and red colours there is up to seventh. But Tomokazu is about half a second up the road now. It's going to take a bit of a miracle, this, from Oruska to try and catch that gap back up. Liebenberg, Rahawi and Woodley, the top three. Pitlick, fourth. Fodor, fifth. And this... Huge battle for sixth place that's been going on. But I feel that the Japanese driver, Tomokozo, has probably just about got enough in hand here. It means that all four drivers, all four Masters drivers, would be through to the point-scoring races if it stays like this. Haruska is certainly back up to seventh, but I can't see him closing the gap now with only two corners to go. Frustration. He tried everything. The flag comes out on the other side of the track. Bradley Liebenberg cruises to a relatively easy victory. A good drive from Sanad Arwahawi as well. Pulled off some good moves to date second. Fred Woodley is through in third. Pitlick takes fourth and goes through. Geza Fodor is in fifth place. And indeed, Kawazi Tomokazu takes sixth place. And he's through as well provisionally with Samuel Haruska, the unlucky driver to miss out there in seventh place. Likewise for Joey Vonk, who kept himself in the running. We didn't quite, I don't think, have the pace ultimately. He was just there, ready to pounce once the others started holding each other up. So, terrific race that. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so lively, if I'm honest, with only eight carts in there. But there you can see confirmation of the provisional results. And with Liebenberg, al Rahawi, Woodley, Pitlick, Fodor and Tomokazu, the six drivers that will continue their day racing through to the pre-final. Oh, that was great stuff then. It always is lively from the second chance heats. And uh, we've got, of course, the pre-finals to look forward to in the not too distant future. So... Our next on-track action is going to be at 11.40. That is the start time for the junior pre-final, an 11-lap race. At 12 o'clock, we'll have the pre-final for the seniors, 14 laps, the race distance, and 20 minutes after the start of that one. At 12.20, the DD2 pre-final. That goes uh, as our final race before we head into lunch. So it's uh, two minutes past 11 here in southern Germany. So in just about 38 minutes time 37 minutes time we'll have the start of the junior pre-final we'll have all the build-up of course to that uh, beforehand yeah, Chris is uh, going to try and grab some drivers from that second chance seat on our live interview camera in terms of the broadcast uh, we'll be back uh, before the start of that race of course at about 11.30 on RGMMC TV you'll be able to see the third part of our track guide with Marcel Shermer and you'll also uh, be able to hear from Kian Dewis, the pole sitter uh, for the juniors. Uh, we interviewed him after getting pole position yesterday evening. So uh, you'll hear Kian Dewis's interview and then we'll be uh, back live about four or five minutes before the race starts, the junior pre-final. And we'll have all the build-up then, live interviews at the end of each of the pre-finals. Uh, we'll hear from Renus van Kalmthout, who has taken his maiden Euro Challenge pole position in seniors in only his third senior race. Uh, we'll hear from him a few minutes before the senior pre-final. And we will also hear from uh, Luca Kamali, the DD2 pole sitter, who we spoke to yesterday evening. And Igor Mukin, the uh, Russian, who has taken effectively master's pole position. We'll hear from those two ahead of their race in DD2 which kicks off at 12.20. So that's the programme 
for the next three races. And this afternoon, of course, don't miss out on the finals themselves. We have the junior final at 1.40, seniors at 2.20, and at 3 o'clock, the DD2 final. And we'll have the live grid walks about 15 minutes or so before each of those races and the chance to catch up uh, with some of the top drivers live on the grid, which is going to be on the track itself. So that's what we've got coming up. Crystals, I think, has managed to grab a couple of the drivers. I think we're going to hear from Bradley Liebenberg, our race winner, and also from Fred Woodley, uh, the Canadian driver who finished in third place and is another one that qualified. So Chris is going to speak to them in a moment or two's time. Uh, continue to watch us live on the live stream on rgmmcmedia.com. Keep sending in your messages for the social stream as well. Get them in early because of the slight delay that they have coming through to a, uh, the commentary box, and then we'll read them out uh, ahead of each of the races as best as we can. And we'll have all the build-up and see the drivers as they get into the carts. The circuit commentary is also being fed live here and not just online. So whatever messages we read out, the drivers, the teams here in the paddock will be able to hear this great facility at Vaxdorf. Great to be back here after a three-year break and my first time here. So we've got Chris Dawes and, as I say, he's caught up with two of our front runners down in the pits from that last race in the...